Hello everyone and welcome to the Melbourne Traditionalist episode 21. I am Mark Moncrew from the Melbourne Traditionalist and I have with me David Hiscock from XYZ. How are you David? Very good, always, be, always good to be here Mark. Excellent. Now uh, last week we talked about my five favourite movies hmm. and I guess now it's your turn. Yeah, let's I argued on. against it but you said no, 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 <laughs> fair's fair. <laughs> I think I said something along the lines of, I don't know how I'm going to come up with them, uh, because I, I don't really watch movies anymore. Um, I'm actually going to have to, have to preface this list um, by making a, a bit of a disclaimer about my choice of movies. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, because since taking the red pill, um, I can't see movies... The, the same way that I used to. Mm-hmm. M- movies definitely used to make me uncomfortable. I could see the leftism in them. Yeah. Um, but uh, since taking the red pill, I've uh, th- there's another character that I see in the movies. So like this is stuff that's got to be said. Um, it, like so we understand that um, a people, a nation, they have a character that's yes. based on their history. Um, mm-hmm. th- that affects their genetics, their mindset, um, their behaviour everything like that um so we understand that well uh, for an example of that like you can look even just at the difference between aussies and englishmen um, yeah like uh we're basically englishmen who've like been hardened up by a harsher environment for a couple of hundred years basically yep. and so that's just after a couple of hundred years so but when we talk about uh, Jews and the reason I'm talking about Jews is because they They're are a big part of the massively industry. overrepresented yeah. in Hollywood and the entertainment industry in America. Um, they have had their whole character and their whole genetics um, molded by um, cumul- cumulatively uh, a couple of millennia of being a people, a nation without a homeland. Mm-hmm. And so, the way they have been able to survive is that they haven't always integrated. Um, fully into their society, generally speaking, uh, into the into the host society, and they um, have strong in grip preference and make yep. sure that they keep themselves alive. That's right. Therefore, it suits them to live in host countries which tolerate the outsider. Mm-hmm. In order to do that, they work t- just to undermine a little bit the in grip preference of the host society, just so that they don't reject the outsider completely. Um, the downside of this is that they can push it too far. If there's no off switch, that just forces them just over time to cause a reaction. They get kicked out from place to place. Um, and so uh, th- that's a dynamic that's been analysed. Um, just And it's just the way it is. It's yeah. like when you look at the yeah. history. So the thing about American movies then is that because of the over-representation of Jews in Hollywood... Um, they've made it the character of American movies to present the character of America itself uh, rather than being like based on our Europe, European heritage or Americans' European heritage primarily British heritage yep. um, and just that history it's, it's more based on ideas and tolerance and diversity and so you have a whole heap of movies of which come out of America, of whatever genre, which elevate the other, Um, which um, portray the little guy battling against uh, incredible odds. That's right. And that's one thing I would say, you know, from a political perspective, is that Hollywood is very liberal. Yes. Even in classical liberal. Yes. And it emphasises the individual against the system. Yes. Yes. And it pretends that the individual can actually overcome the system mm-hmm. by themselves, mm-hmm. and that that's a worthwhile goal to just be an individual. Yes, yes. So um, a lot of my mov- my favorite movies are still my favorite movies, yeah. um, and I identify things which I like about those movies because um, they still have an element of what I would call red pilled or traditional or mm-hmm. national or Christian. Um, even though at the time they were using those vehicles to inf- to uh, as a vehicle um, to just put that subversive message in there, yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of like I'm reading history backwards here, in some ways. But so there's my disclaimer, basically. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
uh, I can give a definite number one um, for my favorite movie of all time. That's Return of the Jedi. Um, I could list the whole Star Wars series, but mm-hmm. for me, as a kid, I always liked Return of the Jedi because when I was a kid, Return of the Jedi Which is was the third movie? The third movie of the Star Wars saga. Yep. It was the one that was made last and therefore had the best special effects. And um, like I know everybody likes Empire Strikes Back now mm-hmm. because yep. objectively, yes, it is the best movie. But I was a kid and I wanted to, I wanted to win. <laughs> <laughs> And I loved space battles, and it had. Uh, uh, when I was a kid, it had the most epic space battle I'd ever seen in my life. Yeah, and so that's why I loved it. Um, now, as an adult, um, having gone through the process, um, I see it a different way. I see it as um, basically Darth Vader. Just um, I don't even see it as a redemption. Yeah. I, actually, I don't see it as a redemption at all. I see it as Darth Vader basically getting his family back. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't go along with the idea that the Emperor did nothing wrong. I think the Emperor was a bad guy. Yep. Um, I don't necessarily... Uh, but I, I go along with the Empire did nothing wrong now. Um, but in particular, I have a lot of sympathy for the character of Anakin Skywalker um, yep. because um, he was always motivated by love for his um, family and for the people that he loved. Um, and he got sucked into basically a cult. The Jedi Order was a cult... Yeah, quite um, right. Yeah, uh, it's George Lucas had this obsession with Buddhism, and he put that into the Jedi Order. Mm-hmm. And uh, from what I understand, he actually started out as a follower of Ayn Rand, but he became more and more socialist as he was surrounded by Hollywood. And so he's put all of those ideals into the Jedi Order, and so they're kind of like this multicultural communist Buddhist cult. Yeah, um, uh, which convinces Anakin Skywalker that he has to forget and reject all the things that make him do what made him want to be a Jedi in the first place, which is protect the people he loves. Yeah, yeah. actually, that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's the Jedi Order is just complete bullshit. And so um, uh, he naturally and rightly likes the idea of a strong leader um, who just keeps order in the, in the galaxy because when you have order, less people die. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's mathematics. And so he's the emperor who is basically a psychopath and manipulates Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, or manipulates Anakin Skywalker into becoming his follower. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, Anakin doesn't need much encouragement to, to rebel against the Jedi Order, but in doing so, the emperor manipulates it so that Darth Vader, who's the most powerful Jedi, becomes horribly... Um, disfigured and, and injured and puts his suit on him which keeps his powers bait and it's all science fiction blah 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 um, and so in the process um, of that Anakin Skywalker realises that he's been lied to by the Emperor because the Emperor tells him that um, Padme his wife died but then during the original Star Wars series he finds out that he has children yes. he has a son and then he finds out that he has a, a daughter um, and it's Ultimate, and uh, you see in The Empire Strikes Back where Darth Vader says to Luke Skywalker when they're having that epic lightsaber fight, look, you and me, we can join forces, we can destroy the Emperor. He's foreseen it. Like, he, the Emperor has done everything he can to keep Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker from joining forces because they, together they'd be too powerful for him. And then in Return of the Jedi, um, he's beaten Luke. Um, well, he, he's beating Luke. And then through reading Luke's mind he finds out that Luke that has a sister i.e. he has a daughter as well yep. um, and so it, this, this whole time like I think Darth Vader has just been biding his time just finding the right moment to just finally uh, take his revenge on the Emperor mm-hmm. and it's when the Emperor is killing Luke that he's like nah I've had it um, uh, and he kills the Emperor and he kills the Emperor yeah, oh, spoilers yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, it's, to me, it's, it's just um, it's a story of uh, just the great love between a father and a son, um, yeah. and just coming back together. Um, yeah, uh, I've I've talked about in other on other streams why I hate um, the last um, Jedi so much. Like they just completely destroyed the character of Luke, and that's because yes. they were yeah. communist feminists who hated everything he represents, and that's 
basically what you need to say. But yeah, so as a kid, I loved Return of the Jedi because it, at the time it was the most epic of the Star Wars movies and we won. Mm-hmm. Now I see, it. I see it as the resolution of yep. the real Star Wars story. Yep. Um, so uh, from there, let's, let's keep it going. So yeah. um, I love... Uh, like, um, one of the things that shaped my uh, who I am and just my interest in history and politics has been the studying of World War Two. Yep. Um, so um, I've written it on XYZ. Like I played a, a Battle of Britain flight simulator game when I was a kid, and I played, spent hours. I remember everything. reading that. Yeah, I shot down thousands of Messerschmitts. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, I also, I also shot down thousands of Spitfires. I flew Messerschmitts, and it was great. Flight of sights. Um, and so I, w- I always loved um, the World War Two movies and generally war movies. Yeah. Uh, because of that, like it's like my interest expanded from that. Um, and I always liked flying movies. Um, looking back, you know, like they're just they're not as good. There's only so much you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now, just having understood just uh, how the story of World War Two, like we've been sold a lie. Um, like the 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 Soviet Union was the most um, genocidal regime at that point. Um, yet we sided with them. Um, so we're present like. Uh, Although, to be honest, we didn't really have much choice. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we had a choice between, like, two very powerful regimes. Um, and neither, siding with either of them, neither of those choices would have been moral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, what I notice now is that um, movies made back in the 50s and 60s um, about World War II, um, they presented the Germans as Germans. Yes. Um, now uh, they present the Germans as solely as Nazis, and like it's getting to the point now where. And, and in fact, I've noticed that yeah. I, I listen to a lot of history channels on YouTube. Yes. And you know, some of them will always say Nazis. Yes. Never German. They never say German. I, I read a lot of books. I read. I mean, it does yeah. depend. Some of them yeah. are, are much fairer than others, but yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they've just got into that habit, and they don't even realise that it is a habit. Yeah. It's at the point now where um, they openly promote um, just uh, grotesque violence against German soldiers and they dehumanise them as Nazis. Like there's mm-hmm. a Tarantino movie where there's a guy who literally just bashes yep. soldiers' heads in with a baseball bat. Um, so uh, when I look at a movie which sort of still stands up um, and just, you know, pr- just presents it as enemy combatants uh, f- fighting bravely. Yeah. Um, it's the enemy below. Um, mm-hmm. In the enemy below, it's a story of, of a US destroyer hunting a German U-boat. And yeah. it's a magnificent game of cat and mouse. And it spends equal time presenting the captains and the crew and all the important players. Um, and it's like a game of chess. Like Each captain is trying to th- figure out what the other guy is thinking. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes they're wrong, but generally they're right. And that's what makes it such a great movie, and that's what makes them such great captains. Um, and you see uh, the fear and the bravery on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at different times, each, each, each side has the upper hand. Um, and it, it, ends, it doesn't end in a glorious victory or anything like that. But at the end of it all, like, even though each side has killed the other... Um, uh, th- there's respect shown between each side. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's just it's just a good war movie, and it doesn't get into the it, it avoids the black and white um, narrative which we get now. Yes, um, which is why I think it's a great movie. Um, so uh, next on my list, I'll I'll mention the movie Serenity. Um, now this one, this is now there's more than one movie called Serenity. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, well, this one is uh, based on a series. I think it was called S- Serenity. Um, it was a, seri- a science fiction series written by Joss Whedon. Firefly. 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 Oh, okay. Serenity was Serenity the movie or was Firefly the movie? I think Firefly was the Serenity movie. was the movie. Serenity was the movie. Firefly was the series. Um, Correct. Yes. So this one you've. So this is Serenity, two thousand nineteen, yeah. and Serenity, two thousand five. 
2005, yeah. The thing about Serenity, it was based on a, a series called Firefly, which only had one series. Um, and it was made shortly after Joss Whedon had finished up with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. I actually love Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer until recently. It was my favourite show of all time. And I like it despite all the degeneracy. Like, Joss Whedon has an obsession with lesbians. Yep. With the um, apparently weak female who holds incredible magical power. Yep. Um, and all those casts are just ridiculously multicultural and just the usual sort of globo homo sort of stuff that we're used to seeing now. Yep. Um, so I never watched Buffy uh-huh. because... Even back in the 90s, I was sick of Little Girl is Super Powerful. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, it's also um, quite anti-Christian. Um, uh, Which is where you were at that time in your life. True, true. Um, and looking at how Joss Whedon's life has played out since, like he actually had a few sexual harassment claims yep. put against him. So he was obviously one of those little soy boys who was just massively virtue signaling in order to try to actually get some pussy yeah um and since then he's stepped over the feminist line and they've all just um they now now they hate him it's hilarious um so the thing about joss whedon though is he always presents evil as evil Mm -hmm. um despite all the globo homo nonsense he never falls into that postmodern trap of like he he doesn't Actually, he doesn't. Pre- yeah, he doesn't. Doesn't present the grey. He presents characters as struggling between the good and evil in themselves and yes. fighting to overcome that. But there's never any grey. Evil is evil, um, and that's the same with Serenity. Um, the uh, he's got the usual sort of ridiculous cast. Like he, um, there's a, uh, in in this galactic society, prostitutes actually are considered. Like um, really, really high in stature. Oh, and what's the term that he uses? There's a, a specific term. Oh, there is, isn't it's, it? Like a hostress or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, like they actually have a a respectful word for them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's like um, it, it's like he's trying to hark back to the pagan practice where they would actually have prostitutes in the temple, believing yeah. that like if you have sex with a prostitute, that brings you closer to God. It's that kind of pagan idea. Um, it's got the typical um, uh, apparently crazy um, petite woman who turns out to be a massive weapon yep. designed by the government um, it, yeah, it's multicultural as hell all that sort of stuff um, but uh, you've got these evil although pe- I will say yes. in both the series and the movie yes. that the men are all white oh yes and they're all masculine Absolutely. Well, he, um, the, the the captain is is absolute gold. It's like he's just Joss Whedon has this little bit of um, rebellion in yep. his mind that he just creates these magnificent characters. Like the captain is basically um, John Galt in a spaceship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the the evil characters are absolutely evil. Um, there are these creatures called Reavers where, like, to give an example of just how horrible these creatures are, there's a scene where it shows a, f- as you, a female captain, it, it, like, leaving a last message, of, a video message saying, the Reavers have entered the ship, they've killed all the crew, they're about to get me, you've got to um, send help or you've got to get the message out. And you hear the door being broken down, you, you see her put the gun to her head and try to shoot herself, but the gun gets taken out of her hand and then you hear, you don't see, you just hear what. So if, like, they're so bad that somebody gets stopped by the creatures from killing themselves, yep. that's, that's how evil these creatures are. Um, and so this is the spoiler I'll, I'll give. So the story of how the Reavers get created is put into the, into the movie because Joss Whedon wanted to, like, explain where they came from. Yep. So there was this planet where the government did an experiment where they gave the population drugs to make them more docile, to make them easier to govern. Yes. So about 90% of the population, um, uh, basically the drug worked too well. They became so docile that they um, stopped um, trying to live. And so they just lay down and die. Yeah. But then the other 10% of the population reacted to the drug 
went absolutely psycho and just um, became the most horrible creatures you can possibly imagine. And these creatures are called the Reavers. Um, and so uh, he, again, there's that little bit of rebellion in Joss Whedon's mind. He understands that you can't make people do what you want them to do. People yeah, have yeah. to be free. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, I'm, there's a little bit of liberalism in there too that I'm sort of liking it for as well. Um, and so there's there's a magnificent battle scene. Um, I won't give too many spoilers, but there's a great line where because like um, this John Gold character in the spaceship, he wants the the whole galaxy to know what has actually happened and why. That's right. And so he um, puts a communication in a central location to send out to the entire galaxy, and he says, "You can't stop the signal." And so that's one of the things I keep saying about what we're trying to do. You can't stop the signal. Once it's out, it's out. Yeah, and you yeah. can you can try to suppress it all you want, but you're not going to be able to suppress it. Um, how are we going for time? I've got about twenty minutes. Um, I'm, I know I'm doing most of the talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to just to sum up real quickly, the last two, um, the Matrix. I've got to put that in there. Um, yeah, yeah. The the first movie everybody loves, and everybody thinks it's the best one. And the other two are crap. Yeah. The reason for that is once you've had the red pill moment, you can never have another red pill moment. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And you can never have another Neo being becoming Neo moment. Um, and also just the whole concept of why didn't I take the blue pill? Um, it, so it's, it has those three concepts in there which are absolutely magical. After that, they just ramp up the action, all that sort of stuff. But what I didn't understand when I watched it uh, a decade and a half ago, uh, about, the second, about the second and the third movie, is that it explores the concept that a human rebellion has happened before. Um, basically, the creators of this system... Yes, you're quite correct. Un- they keep saying that there's been... You're not the first. Yes, yes. They understand that humans are going to rebel, and so they um, create... Um, ba- basically, they, they allow for that glitch, and they lay all these traps for the humans just to keep continuing the cycle. Yes. And so, for me, like the, I now love those two movies, because, like... Taking the red pill, gone through a process. Obviously, there are more things available then. But then you find out, well, we've been trying to fight this battle for much longer than I thought. And there are people who have been fighting this battle for decades. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Centuries. Yeah. That, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole system that's designed to just keep us going around in circles. Yeah. Um, and then the last movie I'll put in there is Bill and Ted, just because it's just a lot of fun. And I've always been a metalhead. And they have amazing heavy metal music. And Steve Vai... Um, does the soundtrack and it's epic and yeah that's all I've got to say well you said two minutes ago oh I've got two I've got 20 minutes to go and I've got two movies and in two minutes you described everything oh I was was, I'm trying to keep it under half an hour (laughs) (laughs) Um, so is that the order from Um, from best to no Um, the only one I can actually say uh, is my number one movie is Return of the Jedi Right. After and that, I'm, are... I'm just like, okay, these are movies that I love, and this is why I still love them, despite the, the messages there's, contained. There's a lot of science fiction. Yes, I've always been a big science fiction fan. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's just, I've, I've always loved space and spaceships, and um, I, I know basically pretty much everybody hates Elon Musk, but I reckon, like, he understands that humans have to become multiplanetary in order to survive, because... You know, we, 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 we might win the race war, but what happens when the polar flips happen? But anyway, that's getting told. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, I, I, I... And just, there was no overlap what's that? between my movies and yours. Oh, I would have put Lord of the Rings there, but I didn't want to overlap. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I, just, I just think Lord of the Rings, it's, the, the whole story is just... It, as I said last week, it just... Um, he tells the story of us without explicitly saying us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, is it true that Han Solo shot first? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, I had a funny story with my nephew. He's born nineteen ninety, so oh, by right. the time he got to watch it, he saw Greedo was... fire the first shot and he ducks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right? Greedo fires the first shot and and Han Solo ducks and then he shoots him. All right. And I said, you know, in the original, Han Solo shoots first. Yes. And he says. Oh, I can't believe that. That's that's exactly that makes so much sense. Oh, really? Good. Because because it doesn't make sense 
Yes. That Greedo shoots first. Yes. It makes perfect sense that Han Solo shoots it's first. It's totally fitting with his character. And in fact, exactly. And yeah. it actually takes away from his character. Yes. That he he doesn't do this underhanded thing. Yeah. Because that's who he really is. Yeah. It's it's an example of like. And West again, that's was... another. Uh, I guess he is a redemptive character. Uh, Han Solo. Han Solo, because he starts off as very disreputable and bit by bit becomes oh. uh, actually fights for a bigger cause than himself. Because at the start, that's all he's interested in himself. You know? Yeah. This is an interesting one because like the way I see it now, because like, again, as I was saying, I understand that George Lucas was into Ayn Rand. Yep. Um, but over the course of his life, he became less and less like that. Mm -hmm. It's like Han Solo does a, a reverse um, Hank Reardon. Yep. Um, as in, he starts off as a complete individualist. Um, but then, yeah, as you say, he, 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 uh, uh, he fights for something that's bigger than himself. But I, I, think, um, I think George Lucas didn't mean... Like, like we can put that in a good respect like we can talk about um people who've been um you know uh brainwashed by liberalism i guess yep. into thinking that we're just individuals and that's all we are mm -hmm. um and then we come to understand that like we're part of uh, a whole people and our character is to be individualistic and that's where that comes from but yeah. we, we don't elevate that I, I think george lucas like his sort of socialist tendencies come out though because like in one of the last scenes of Return of the Jedi like um, Han Solo basically is prepared to cuck himself because he, he's in love with Leia like he's been in a relationship with Leia and like um, they see this, the Death Star blow up and um, Han's like I don't think Luke was on that thing when it blew and like Leia's like no nah, he wasn't I can feel it and like then he says oh you love him don't you and she's like yes and then he's like okay well when he comes back I won't get in the way so like th that's uh, like this. See, so I don't I don't agree that that's cucking. I think yeah. that that's his old personality coming in. Yeah. You know, like oh yeah, I don't really need you. I can. You know, oh I can really? Be, I can, <laughs> you know, I can be footloose and fancy free. You know, yeah, maybe, maybe he thought he was. <laughs> he thought he was off the hook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then okay, of course, okay, and okay. then of course, she reveals that uh, he's my brother. And yeah. he's like, oh, oh all right. <laughs> I'm back again. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I, I always wanted to be with you. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. That's, yeah. yeah, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I liked the very first Star Wars movie. Uh, ah, yeah, A New Hope. Yeah. yeah. Or, as it should be called, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yes. And uh, it's, because um, it's actually a complete story. Yes. And the only thing that I would change in it is the ending. The ending's a bit too abrupt. Oh, really? And it always jars me. Oh. And it just needs, I reckon, you know, two or three minutes more oh. just so it doesn't have How that How come? I, I love the ceremony where they all applaud. I, I always get shivers down my spine. It, it feels like it's tacked on and then halfway through the ceremony they just turn around and, you know, everyone claps and then bang, just ends. Yeah, right. Well, I guess it, it leaves you wanting to know more, doesn't it? Well, maybe you're right there. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a shame before Disney just came along and just destroyed everything. I, I would have loved to have seen um, in between uh, A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. I want to see the story of like how the Empire, Empire came in with their fleet. They had to flee to Hoth, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So that would that'd be pretty cool. In the same way that, like, um, again, despite the pause, like, I liked the... Um, uh, the movie that they made uh, which sort of um, which is like a prequel to A New Hope um, I can't remember the name of it now it's hilarious uh, you mean the holiday special <laughs> <laughs> no one means the holiday special <laughs> even as a kid I was disappointed with that yeah right it was terrible there was a, I, I read a um, Mad Mad Magazine actually came out with a um, their, their own version of they, they came up with Star Wars the musical and it, like it had um, Darth Vader um, uh, singing um, uh, like a version of my favourite things like singing about how he likes to blow up planets every day <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that does make sense for him doesn't it yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the thing is yeah uh, uh, when I was a kid I would have watched I reckon I watched each Star Wars movie about 50 times and yeah. um, me and my brother we used to play 
we we used to make Star Wars Lego before there was Star Wars Lego. Yeah. Yeah. We we uh, I I made entire fleets of of Tie Fighters. It was it was great. Yeah. Um, it, uh, have it, you have you grown out of that phase? Or? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll leave it there. We're just over the half hour bar. Hmm. Thank you, David. Real pleasure. And have a good day and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. There we go. <laughs>